This episode of the Sloopcast brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based, Cary, Ohio specifically, Ohio-based barbecue company. Uh, he is a food truck. He does catering. He sells amazing spices right to you direct through his website. Uh, his website, you can buy amazing spices such as the Brits blend, which is an amazing salsa or chili blend. Uh, there's the coffee and Q, uh, which is it's it's coffee and barbecue. It's actual coffee. No, nothing artificial in there. Real actual coffee. Um, other great spices such as the Sonoran heat, uh, which is kind of an all purpose, but sort of a taco seasoning, but also sort of an all purpose salt. Um, the smoked, which is another really great versatile seasoning. Uh, but if you're really looking for versatility, you have to go with the S&P Bud. The S&P Bud is salt, it's pepper, but believe me, it's so much more. I just ran out and I'm not not kidding. I'm a little bit upset about it. So you can find all of those and a bunch of other great spices over at themadcanadianbbq.com. Use promo code SLOOPCAST10, that's SLOOPCAST10 at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. Once again, that is SLOOPCAST10 at checkout. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. They are also an Ohio-based company. They're also in the northwest part of the state, although they are in Cary, Ohio, which is, you know, near near Findlay. Um, you can pick up, or excuse me, near, t I, I just said Findlay, which is Mad Canadian. Iron Bean Coffee Company is in Perrysburg, Ohio, which is near Toledo. Uh, they are fair trade certified, USDA organic. Integrity is at the core of what they do. Uh, premium micro batch roasted coffee, fresh to order. It's not sitting on shelves. It's not sitting in a warehouse months and weeks after it's been roasted. No, it's not roasted until you order it. It's a veteran owned company. We are, this is the Memorial Day episode. This is a veteran owned company. Give them a shout out, give them some support. Uh, you can visit their website at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. You know, doing two of those is much harder than doing one of those. Hi, YouTube. Alex is on the show today. We're very excited. He... <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's start the show. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today? Not Kyle, Alex. Hey, hey what's up, everyone? Glad to be here. Uh, you know, I, some guys are irreplaceable, but I'll do my best today to uh, to fill in admirably. Yeah, uh, Alex Kleitman of BuckeyeScoop.com filling in for Kyle today. Um, recruiting expert, insider. Uh, what other titles should I throw your way? That's good enough that's good for enough. me. That's I'm good. Just, I'm just a guy happy to be here today, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> and can, for, for the non-YouTube people, he's with BuckeyeScoop.com. YouTube people, they figured it out. <laughs> um, let's see. We have uh, we have some stuff to get to today. Uh, as I said, Alex Gleitman is a recruiting expert. So what am I what are we going to do here? Right. We're going to we're gonna have a recruiting focused show. Um, we're going to talk a little bit of news. Um, Ohio passes or excuse me, is attempting to pass in a uh, name image likeness law. So we'll have a brief conversation about that. But then we're going to get into uh, the meat of the show, which is me taking another shot at at doing a mock 2022 class for Ohio State. I tried back in January and Alex, I'm I haven't listened back to it yet and I didn't I didn't even bother to look at who my 24 players were. But I can tell you this, um offensive tackle Goodwin was in the thumbnail. So oops. <laughs> you 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 aren't alone on that one. That's you get a you get a fair pass. We might we might roast you a little bit today for some of these picks, but he aren't a good one, and he still could end up in the class. So don't don't slow your roll there. But uh, <laughs> you know, I not in my mock. You were not the only one. He was in my mock class, that's for sure. 
All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit of name image likeness. So Ohio has introduced its own, or at least uh, one representative from the state of Ohio has introduced their own name image likeness laws. Uh, this would essentially pave the way forcing Ohio State and other universities within the state of Ohio to allow players to profit off of their name image likeness. We've seen laws like this passed in California, Florida, and elsewhere. Um, Gene Smith specifically said that something's going to need to happen federally or this is going to be complete chaos. And of course, you know, uh, uh, this affects college athletics and college sports and college football in a lot of ways. But I think the biggest question is, and I'm not just saying this because Alex is on the show, how does this affect recruiting? Um, we, we got uh, a few questions from our Ask Sloopcast from our patrons or from our uh, Discord people uh, using Ask Sloopcast. A um, couple of the things here. Uh, Buckeye Zach asks a series of questions, uh, essentially asking, what does this do for the Olympic sport athletes? Does this do anything for the Olympic sport athletes? Or is this strictly a football basketball thing? And uh, Duncan from the Discord uh, asks, the better question here is, how does this not affect recruiting? Which I, I think is basically, that's it, right? Like, how does this not, because now, now money's on the table. Well, I mean, it's not like this is the first time money's been on the table, but this time, <laughs> the first time money's been officially on the table. So, I mean, it's it's going to be the Wild West, and I know that you don't know the answer, but what what does this do to recruiting? Yeah, it's it's big time. It's this becomes part of the pitch. And, you know, Mark Pantone spoke with the media on Friday morning and he was asked about this. Aaron Dunstan, the new on-campus recruiting coordinator, was asked about this. And I think they said right now it's going to be 30 percent of their recruiting presentation during visits is going to focus on NIL. And they expect prospects from a football standpoint for it to be about 50% of the conversation that they want to have. So I think for Ohio state, it's a really good thing because it's in Ohio state's in a big city, huge yeah. football brand, tons of alumni all over with, you know, plenty of opportunities to provide these young men in the, in the NIL space. And the, think about all the boosters and Columbus and businesses and things like that. Um, so from a recruiting standpoint, you know, for Ohio state, they're positioned really, really, really well. On a football standpoint, obviously basketball um, as well. I think, you know, someone mentioned the Olympic sports and all that. I think it, it is going to be interesting. I think this ultimately is a, a football and, and basketball thing, uh, men's basketball, maybe women's a little bit. But the other sports, I think you will be surprised, um, especially if someone's really, really good and like like Olympic good. Like in like Ohio State has had in like the wrestling space. Yeah, I was thinking like um, Zack Snyder's getting deals under these laws had, you know, have, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so you may not see that from like the national scope or or visible to you, but there could be shoe companies, wrestling shoe companies yeah. that come to these guys or track shoe companies that, you know, go to superstars at the college level and they could make a decent amount of money. It's a little bit more niche. Um, but I think that there is certainly opportunity. And then you think about things, I mean, getting people to come sign autographs at a camp or a car dealership or things like that, that come into play at, look, I'm someone who is not for paying student athletes. I think that I just don't think that that model works like paying them a salary and things like that. But I do think them being able to, um, sign autographs at a mall and make money off of it is something that you know, I'd like to see. So I'm glad that it's coming into fruition here. I think it will come into fruition at the national level as well. And it's only going to be good when it comes to Ohio State recruiting, because yes, everyone's on a level playing field once it's legal everywhere. But the Ohio States, Penn States, Notre Dame, Alabama, the, the big the rich blue blood football programs in, or in schools in big cities where yeah. there's opportunity to market those players big time. I think this is huge you know, for yeah, USC. Huge. I think this is huge for uh -huh. Rutgers potentially. And you're, you're still, you're on the, on the New Jersey recruiting beat. Um, so that's a thing you're well aware of. I think it could be huge for Rutgers and, and like what's to stop. And, you know, maybe there will be rules or whatever to stop this. I don't know, but what's to stop Nike from putting the entire Oregon football program 
on a Nike contract. Uh, you know, and yeah, or for that matter, Ohio State, you know, yeah. with Rogue or Limited or any of the other sort of sports. Maryland can uh, Under Armour is not quite where Under Armour was a few years ago, but still. Under Armour could bo- yeah. could could just bankroll the entire football program. I, I think they will. I think you'll see that. But I also think, you know, Nike's very invested in the schools that, that are Nike schools. Ohio State's a Nike school, right? right. Alabama is a Nike school. So why wouldn't they take advantage? Chase Young's not going to be able to probably, I don't know all the rules and ins and outs, but he's not, Chase Young at Ohio State isn't going to be able to sign an endorsement deal with Under Armour when Ohio State's a Nike school. I imagine those types of restrictions are going to be in place. Same thing with like Coke schools and Pepsi schools and things like that. But why wouldn't Nike take advantage of the fact that Chase Young is at a Nike school, get him to the Nike school, right. then take advantage of it and be able to sign superstars like that, get them while they're in college and then just translate those deals to when they make the pros. So I think you, you're onto something. Those um, those big shoe companies, apparel companies are going to not just the schools like the Nikes or, or Oregon's and, and Under Armour's where the, where the founders were alumnus, but I think all the schools that are under their umbrellas are going to benefit big time. Yeah. All right. Uh, NIL is not going away anytime soon, and we're we're not gonna we're not gonna solve it today. So let, let let's move <laughs> on. No. <laughs> let's move on to uh, trying to mock out this class. Uh, so one thing to note here is that a week this weekend this but we're we're we are recording this pretty far ahead of time. But next weekend, for anyone listening to this, it's going to be a huge weekend coming up this weekend. Um, by the way, I'm, you've, you've told me you've listened to the show and therefore I, one, am forced to believe you. Although I refuse to believe anyone listens to the show, even like (laughs) my patrons, I I refuse to believe anyone listens to the show. Keeps me sane. Uh, but as far as if you, if you've let, you know, I Kyle too, but also me terrible at pronouncing names. So I'm just giving you full reign to correct me at any time. Don't feel like it's impolite not to correct me for the sake of- I'll do my best. For the sake of me and everyone's listening. By the way, if you say you also don't know, that just makes me feel better. So (laughs) I'll let you know. All right. I'll let you know. So visiting, uh, and and I've kept this list, but we're only talking 2022 kids today, only talking 2022. Uh, we'll, we'll leave 2023 for few future episodes. So visiting this weekend of the 2022 com, uh, recruits, Jalen Humphrey, CJ Hicks, Quinn Ewers, Gabe Powers, Caleb Burton. Uh, is it Kion Grace? Keon. Keon. Keon Grace. Benji Gosnell, uh, Bennett Christian, Tegra Chabola, Jair Brown, Key Stokes. Uh, those Kai guys. Stokes. What's that? Kai Stokes. Kai. All right. Kai Only Stokes. two. Not bad. <laughs> well, mm, percentage wise, we're, we're, maybe it's a B. Maybe it's a B. Uh, and also one of them's name is CJ. <laughs> uh, but so those are the committed guys coming in this weekend of the uncommitteds. We have Amari Abor. I'm pausing on that one. How'd I do? I think you're you're good. Okay. I think you're good. Zach Rice, Emil Wagner, George Fitzpatrick, Dominic James, Curtis Perry, Toriano Pride. All right. Good. Xavier, I I, I asked you this on the board, on the Buckeye Scoop board. And I think your advice to me was just pretend the the, uh, N wasn't there. Xavier Wankpa. I, I, so I used to say Xavier Wonkpa. Wonkpa. But oh. I, I have since learned from your posts that maybe it might be N Wonkpa. You say like Jackson Smith and Jigba. So Xavier and Wonkpa, but I will, I will get to the bottom of this one for sure. Okay. But so it's almost I'm like. I'm going to go with N Wonkpa. So you're just pronouncing N as N. Correct. All right. I think that's how you do it. All right. Well, I'm I'm going with that until the official Ohio State media guide or you tell me otherwise. <laughs> uh, and Wankpa, 
and Zion Branch. Those are the uncommitted guys visiting this weekend. So I guess my first question to you would be, uh, do, do you feel like there's a potential commitment coming here? Um, is, is anyone here, would you put anyone here on commitment watch? I would probably say no. Okay. I think these kids waited this long to take visits. Yeah. And at this point, if you have a few scheduled in June, why not just go through the whole thing and then make your decision after? Just especially you're not paying anything. So that's my opinion. I do think Emil Wagner, it's probably Ohio State or Notre Dame and Uber Heights Wayne kid, which normally I would say is great for Ohio State. In this case, Marcus Freeman and uh, Mike Mickens, two yeah. Wayne alum, are on Notre Dame staff and helping to recruit him. So it's a unique situation. But if they do a good enough job, maybe there's a chance. But I do think he'll take the Notre Dame visit. And then in Wonkba, maybe also if they do a good enough job yeah. and they, he just shuts it down and says, this is it. But I think Notre Dame and Texas A&M and maybe Alabama are still right there. So I'm going to say – no immediate commitments, but could be down the road. Okay. Um, I think the other question I have for you just as a follow-up would be, how bad is it for Ohio State that Marcus Freeman is now at Notre Dame versus Cincinnati? Just from, well, I mean, I mean, from it, a recruiting standpoint. Yeah, I mean, that's night and day. Like, no disrespect to Cincinnati. Right. Luke Pickles built a... Tremendous program there. And and look, the guys before him, even uh, you, you go back to Brian Kelly and D'Antonio and Butch Jones, like everyone's done really good at Cincinnati other than Tommy Tuberville. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Luke Fickle's done a great job of recruiting really well in Ohio, beating out, you know, some mid-level power five type schools, the Kentuckys and Minnesotas and Indianas and Rutgers and stuff like that for Cincinnati guys. Um I just think that Ohio state isn't really going to lose a recruitment to Cincinnati maybe once in a crazy blue moon, but it's, they could, they have, and will could always lose battles to Notre Dame and they'll beat Notre Dame too. But I think having Marcus Freeman, who's an Ohio guy, who's a dynamic personality and recruiter, just a great, he's honestly a great human being. I've had the pleasure to meet him in person um, multiple times and he is going to be, a real one. Now, how long is he going to be there? I don't know. And that's something about was Ohio State. I was actually you really think about surprised using a little he bit. took another coordinator job. Well, I, I think he sees this. There was two tracks probably for him being a head coach. One was, or three, one was Fickle going somewhere else and him getting the Cincinnati job. One was staying at Cincinnati and getting like a Mac level head coaching job as the defensive coordinator at Cincinnati. And the other one was going to a big school. He was going to go to LSU before Notre Dame swooped in, killing it there for whatever, two, three years, right. and then getting a power five job um, somewhere like Clark Lee just did, who left Notre Dame. And he's now the head coach of Vanderbilt, uh, where he grew up in Nashville. So I think that there's, there's still probably those three routes for Marcus Freeman, but I think it's a lot easier to get to be – a higher level school head coach being the defensive coordinator at Notre Dame than it is at Cincinnati. All I'm saying is that if I had been Michigan state, I had a, after fickle said no. <laughs> well, Mel, some might argue Mel Tucker is an older, wiser Marcus Freeman. So fair enough. <laughs> of course, that being said, if I was Freeman, I don't know if I would have taken it. Yeah, but- <laughs> it's a tough gig, especially in the big East. So. Well, but also like it's your first chance. Right. And I don't know if you wanted Michigan State, especially in the state that Michigan State was and still is in, that you would have wanted that to be your one and only resume item as a a valid point. It's a valid point. So we'll see how it goes. I I think it will work out pretty well for Marcus, though. I think so, too. I I mean, whatever he does, I'm sure it'll work out well for him because I agree with you. I think he's a complete star in the making. Uh, Let's see. So let's, let's move on to the mock. Uh, I do not, I am not projecting any, any decommitments 
that's ma- that's mostly just a choice I made not to do it. Uh, I don't I don't like to talk about players transferring. I don't like to talk about players decommitting. Um, I just I think it sends a wrong message to to talk about those things. That being said, I, I think uh, Jair Brown has been very publicly flirting with Notre Dame. So I feel like that's probably fair to talk about because I don't I feel like that's a completely open secret. I heard you say on, uh, I believe it was your podcast, uh, that you think it's like 50-50 between Ohio State and Notre Dame right now for Brown. Yeah, I was going to say I'm surprised anyone listens to my podcast, <laughs> just, like, just like you are. Now, uh, yeah, um, I, I would say I could just see that one going anyway. Ohio State, Notre Dame, it's similar to Devontae Smith last year where I don't think he loves seeing Ohio state get all these DBs and where do I fit and kind of into the picture. And maybe since he committed, he's not getting as much love. I'm not saying that that is the case, but maybe he just feels that way for whatever reason. And right. Um, I, I don't know, but you know, he, he has had, you know, his father recently passed away and maybe that makes you some rethink some things. And while Notre Dame isn't far from his family in Cincinnati, it's not as close as Columbus is. And I don't know. Maybe I, I just think it's going to be big. Does he show up next weekend for his official visit? If he does, Ohio State has a chance to sit down face to face, talk everything through. He's either going to come out of that and shut everything down or he's going to take visits. And if he takes visits, I think that probably means I would I would consider him probably out. Because okay. if you come away from a sit down face to face with Ryan Day, Kerry Combs, Matt Barnes, Mark Pantone, whoever with your family, and you don't feel good enough about where you stand with Ohio State in your situation, then I don't I don't really see any other way that that you're staying. Like that's that's the sell right there. That's it's gonna come to a head next week, I think. Well, not only that, but you're there with what is it like eight or nine of your fellow commits too, being right. a part of that. Right. Yeah, I, yep, I, I agree with for you. sure. Okay. You're gonna so, come out of that weekend saying, I'm in or I'm out. I I, pretty much. I that makes a lot of sense. All right. So the again, I'm not I'm not projecting any decommitments for the mock draft. So there are currently 12 members in this class. Everyone knows them. They don't need to hear me say it. But for the sake of uh, putting together a a correct mock, as far as like numbers by position, I will say one quarterback currently committed, one offensive lineman, two wide receivers, two tight ends, two linebackers, four defensive backs, uh, that being 12 total. Is is what is currently in the class. Kai Stokes, safety or corner, in your opinion? Safety, thousand percent safety. Okay. All right. Or at least so, I'll, I'll tell you that's how Ohio State views him. So <laughs> fair enough. Uh, Ohio State safety. has viewed a lot of people who were marked as cornerbacks as safeties in the past. So makes sense. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to add to this class. In order to make the numbers make a little more to to make it look to make it make sense, uh, I'm going to add four offensive linemen, only one additional wide receiver. Uh, I'm not putting any more quarterbacks in the class. I think that goes without saying, which is why I didn't say it. Uh, I am putting two running backs into this class. I know that's not necessary. It might just be one, but I'm putting two. Um, four defensive linemen, as they currently don't have any. Um, I wanted to add another linebacker, but I honestly just couldn't find a candidate who I thought was even a relatively good projection. So I'll ask you about that once we get down there to see if maybe you have some names for us. And I've added one additional defensive back. Um, again, not projecting any decommitments. You know, they they could add more defensive backs if if they lose any. So I don't know, just real real quick, how do you feel about that? My my March to 24 there. Yeah, I think it's Fairly good. I maybe they might do four receivers, one running back. I do think they're going to try to find another linebacker. They might go six on the O line or five on the D line. And I think at some point it might just become best available as you're getting sure. toward the end. And, but I think those numbers are are roughly pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously this isn't how Ohio state does it. They don't say we we're absolutely going to take five offensive linemen because you're just not going to take someone if you know that they're not going to hang. So, all right. So let's start off with the offensive linemen. Uh, this is this is my bread and butter. I'm ex offensive lineman. This is 
this is how I like this is how I like to do things. I like to start with the offensive linemen. So projection number one is Emil Wagner. Uh, we already talked a bit about Emil Wagner. I, I feel like I, I I know you have reservations and I know I've heard other uh, people on Buckeye Scoop have reservations. I'm really having a hard time seeing it not happening. And that's probably not smart because Ohio State has definitely lost some in-state offensive linemen in recent years. And everything you said about Marcus Freeman is absolutely true. But I'm 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 putting him at Ohio State until I see otherwise. I'm in on that. All We're right. good. One for one so far. All right. Uh, Addison Nichols, uh, a guard. He is from the Georgia area. Uh, highly ranked guy uh, just outside of the uh, composite ranking at 103. Uh, Ohio State has definitely put some guards in the NFL. Thoughts? I like it. Uh, I think they got a really good shot at this kid. Um, I actually think he's probably viewed by coaches a little bit even higher than his ranking is. You look at the schools that want him, um, schools, five schools that are competing for national championships year in and year out. So I like it. I think he actually can play tackle too. Um, They love the versatility on the front. And so I think, I think they're the leader going into the visits, but I don't think it's a huge margin. So they'll have to nail that visit because Schools like Georgia and and some others are going to definitely do do some work. Right. And by speaking of that, I've been pushing a theory lately, and I want you to either tell me I'm full of crap or say that makes sense or somewhere in between. I'm not telling you what to say. Uh, I've been pushing this theory that, you know, we were talking about it specifically around Kai Stokes and Ryan Turner, uh, that the rankings are pretty far behind right now compared to where the rankings would be from a developed standpoint because there weren't any camps last year. And so therefore I'm basically saying these are the least trustworthy rankings and ratings on players since the, since the modern era really came of age, you know, 10, whatever years ago. No. Yeah. That's, that's totally fair. I think, um, I think that's totally fair. There's no doubt. I mean, <laughs> even even the scholarship offers, coaches not being able to evaluate these guys properly, it's all whack. Uh, hopefully it starts to go back to normal this summer. But, you know, we've actually had more access to see some of these kids than coaches because there have been some camps and showcases and things like that that have happened even during the pandemic. We've been able to go cover those. So I do think that I'm always uh, I'm always a little critical of the rankings in general. I I am a not a I, I'm not going to say who, but I, I do think that there are some bias. There are some biases. ESPN ranks in, the the Southern kids better. We all know it. Uh, that's not even who I'm talking about. But, um, <laughs> you know, being inside some of these processes, I, I do think that there is sometimes bias. And I think in certain regions, there's a lack of proper coverage and evaluating kids. So especially my region in the Northeast, um, there's like one guy for each for each of the big two sites. And like, that's just not enough. And I don't know if they value the opinions of people like myself um, (laughs) enough to, to make decisions, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. I I, I just, long story short, I agree with you. I think, um, I think Ryan Turner may be okay, but but Kai Stokes for sure is under, is under ranked right now. There's no doubt about that. Well, you know, it's just when it happens, you know, Ohio state doesn't, take a ton of three stars, especially this early on. So there were people in the discord and on Twitter sort of being like, okay, what are they doing? And I'm like, it's Ohio state and it's defensive backs. If Ohio state's accepting a scholarship offer from a defensive back this early in the process, you just kind of got to trust them. Uh, You know, I, I trust them more than I trust the rankings always, but especially right now. For sure. I agree. All right. So moving on with the offensive linemen, moving on with the uh, with the mock here, uh, Ryan, is it bear Bayer? Yeah, I think First it's one? bear. Just bear. OK, bear. Uh, Ryan Bear, offensive tackle, uh, East Lake, Ohio. Thoughts? I'm not feeling that one. Um, oh, boy, I know, it, I know it gets you're... worse from here if, if you're not feeling Ryan. 
Yeah, I'm looking at your list that you sent me. Um, I'm not feeling it. I don't. I know I'm normally pessimistic. there's an Ohio. I'm pessimistic no. when it comes to Ohio State I hear recruiting you. on the offensive line. I'm trying. I hear to, I'm just trying to be real. I'm not trying to put together a fantasy class. They could look. They're going to have a few in-state kids working out, and I think that maybe you know, there's always that one kid, the the Gavin Cups or the Trey LaRue's or whoever that that surprises you and, and has a really good camp and earns that offer. But I don't think they're there yet. Will they get there? Maybe at some point, but I, I have confidence in a couple other guys on the board that I think they could get. Um, so if we're putting, putting the first two guys in, I, it leaves another spot or two. And I've, I've, I'm going to say no, three. I'm going to say no on Ryan. Okay. A um, couple quick questions. People putting in the discord who are listening live. Um, what distinguishes a guard from a tackle? Uh, I would say, and they give some options here. One of the options they give is foot speed, which is the one I generally go with. Wingspan yeah, and I think, foot speed, I think, are. Yeah, I was going to say length. Yeah. Uh, which wingspan obviously goes in and, and, and foot speed, athleticism. Like you got to be able to move and stay with those guys, those fast guys on the outside. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that. It's interesting in college, there's a lot of like Jamarco Jones, I thought was going to be a guard the whole way and turn into a pretty good college left tackle. Now he's an NFL guard. Right. But um, so I guess I was kind of right on that one. But um, I think college does allow you to have a little bit more flexibility in some of that stuff. But I agree with you. It's foot speed, athleticism, wing, wing, wingspan length. Uh, Stuart underscore E4 US vet from our discord asks. Uh, he wants to know if your area has spring football, like seven on sevens spring. They have seven on seven, but they don't have like there's teams seven on seven teams here. And there's some tournaments held up here as part of like the pylon seven on seven and stuff like that. But they don't have a uh, spring football the way like Florida or Texas or California does. And I know that's been a hot button in Ohio, too. Um, and it's just it puts kids. I think you probably look at the numbers of D1 Division one scholarships in Ohio and it's been, it's been declining. Bill Green talks about this a lot. And I think something like that would really help kind of just keep, keep up with the Joneses, I guess, if you will. So I'd like to see it. I, yeah, I would too. Uh, Not only would I'd like to see it, but I'd also like to actually, you know, see it, go to it, visit it, watch it. Um, Let's see. I have to do a quick ad break here and then we'll finish out the offensive line. Uh, First ad read from the mad Canadian barbecue company. Uh, Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say your our seasonings will take your barbecue from good to great. Um, they have the I went over a couple of these. Let's talk about the two border. Uh, the two border is a savory, spicy, sweet mix. Uh, it's what the Mad Canadian uses on his ribs. It's maple. It's red pepper. Just enough sweet. Just enough heat. Uh, and I like to always say I put it on my eggs because why not? Because why not? It's maple. It's it's a it's a perfect breakfast thing. Uh, there's the Kerry steak, which is just an all around great beef uh, spice. It's not just for steak. You can put it on your hamburgers. You can put it on a roast. Any any sort of beef. I, I think you're going to be good to go. There's the ope, uh, which is a smoked ranch. Because you know what's more what's more Midwest than the word ope and smoked ranch. It doesn't get more Midwest than that. There's also the old fashioned based on the cocktail. It's bourbon. It's cherry. It's just got the right amount of bitters in there. Uh, Again, I I love that one on a pot roast or on a burger. That's that's sort of where I love to put the old fashioned. I think he also says it's great on ribs and I've not tried that one yet, but I believe him. So you can find that and a whole lot more over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Use promo code Sloopcast10 at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. Also, the Iron Bean Coffee Company sponsoring today's show. Uh, Let's see. We talked a little bit about why you should buy from them, them being a veteran owned company. Uh, Let's talk. Let's talk about one of the coffees. Let's talk about the Ride or Die. It's a gentle, distinctive version of the classic American breakfast cup. Brazilian yellow bourbon beans, superb smoothness and flavor. 
Uh, there's the trio of Nordic gods. There's the Thor, the Loki, and of course the Odin. Uh, the Odin is a dark roast. The Thor is a medium dark roast. And the Loki is uh, a medium light roast. So if you're looking for a light roast, uh, I would look towards the Loki. And uh, Nomad wants to let us know that the Raging Tiger, which is a bourbon or whiskey, I don't know about bourbon, but it's a whiskey barrel aged coffee bean. Um, and Nomad hasn't shut up about it since he got some. It's apparently amazing. It's currently out of stock, but there's a little button there that's that basically will remind you when more is in stock. And I have to say, I highly recommend that. So all of that and more can be found at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Once again, two of those really just takes takes the air out of me. I'm used to be able to getting a breather when Kyle's doing the other one. Um, all right, next on the offensive line list, um, Carter Smith. Uh, like I said, if you, if you didn't like my Ryan Bear pick, uh, I feel like you're also, maybe you're just a little bit more optimistic than I am uh, as far as Ohio State's recruiting along the offensive line. Um, like Ryan, he's a three-star in-state kid. He's from Olentangy Liberty, which is in Powell, if you don't know. Not, not you, Alex. I know you know. Uh, if the listeners don't know. Um, and then I'll go ahead and just uh, I'll add the, the next guy on the list as well. Uh, Maurice Hamilton. Uh, he is a guard from Cleveland Heights, which, believe it or not, is in Cleveland, Ohio. So I, I went with some lower ranked in-state kids to fill out the rest of that offensive line class. Uh, obviously, they would join Tegra Chabola. Uh, in the offensive line class. If not the three in-state kids, Alex, who who would you think Ohio State, would you say, has a really good chance with that maybe maybe aren't these three? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I mean, George Fitzpatrick takes an official visit this weekend. No one's talked about him. He's from Colorado, 6'6", 285 pounder, former tight end. So he moves well. He's got the length. He's got the body. I know he's ranked as like a lower four star, if you will, but I think he's a high upside type of kid. And I, I personally like him better than the in-state kids that, that you threw out there. Um, it's not, that I, it's not Saint- that I don't, it's not that I like these guys better. It's that I like Ohio <laughs> state's chances with them better. Just so we're clear. Fair. And I still think one maybe could fit in. I, I would go Carter or Ryan. Um, over Maurice, but I think Ernest Green from St. John Bosco, where Wyatt Davis came out of, honestly, very similar type of player, about 6'5", 330, um, just a road grader. He'll be taking, I think, an unofficial visit this summer uh, to Ohio State and then uh, official visit for the Oregon game. So they might have to wait a little bit for him, but there's only one official visit planned for this kid. It's to Ohio State right now, and I think he hears really good stuff from Wyatt Davis. They got a good shot. So those are two kids who I who I have my eye on. Uh, Jalen Early um, from down in Duncanville, Texas, will be making an official visit. Um, not saying they're going to land him, but I think that maybe there's a better chance than some people think. And then also Cam Dewberry from, from down in Texas will be making an official visit. And I think Ohio State is doing well there. And I'll also say I don't think they're going to get Tyler Booker from IMG, but they're trending – more positively for him. They'll have Zach Rice on campus. They'll at some point hope to get Keonta Goodwin back on campus for an official visit. So there's, you know, what I throw out six, seven, five, six, seven names right there that if you could get two of those in addition to, um, you know, the, the, the other two you projected and and Tegra, I think that's obviously a much better solution for them than, uh, than taking the three in-state Ohio guys, but maybe they end up with one of those Ohio guys and and get Wagner and Nichols and, and two of the guys I mentioned. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I think part of my problem with putting together the mock was deciding like which one or two of those guys. Yeah. And I've just, I've watched Ohio State miss on some highly ranked out-of-state kids a lot recently. Uh, I know Stuart's over here in the Discord channel saying, you know, Zach Rice. And I'm just like, guys, it's not, it just, I, I'm sorry, but I just haven't seen that track record out of Ohio State lately that they're going to go get a guy like Zach Rice. I'd love it. Don't get me wrong. I'd love it. But it just. One was last big name. T- 
tackle out of state would be Petit Fury, yes? Yep. Yeah. And I'm still shocked by that one. I still don't know how that happened, to be honest with you. Greg, Greg Shiano. That's how it happened. <laughs> yeah. Serious. I, I know. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Other, otherwise, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> I, no, I mean, you're right. You're absolutely right. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, giveth and taketh away sometime, I guess. Uh, yeah. Wide receiver. I've, I'm only adding one additional wide receiver to the already committed class, which I know you've already said probably look at two. Um, but I, I'm having a hard time fitting all these guys into one room. And I know we'll, we'll see some transfers, not just this offseason, but probably next offseason as well out of the wide receiver room. Um, I just yeah, it just four feels like a lot to me. And I'm not saying you're wrong, but because you you've forgotten more stuff than I know. So don't ever think I'm telling you you're wrong, but it's just I'm just having a hard time seeing it. So uh, I'm going with one additional wide receiver and I'm going with Caleb Brown. Uh, was once considered a, a Michigan lead, but why would anyone go play at Michigan right now? I'm not just saying that as an Ohio State fan. I'm just I'm being serious. Why would anyone go to Michigan right now? Agree. And I agree with you on Caleb Brown. I think it's probably that one gets wrapped up after his visit in a, in a few weeks. And uh, yeah, I, I, look, I, they're still recruiting other receivers. Um, and I think they wouldn't be doing that if they were set on three. So and, and I know for a fact they're exploring some guys who they haven't even offered yet. They're still monitoring a few guys. So that makes me think that they want four, okay. um, which is why I, I kind of say that. Um, but I think Caleb Brown, I, I'm, I'm good with, with Caleb Brown here. Pencil, pencil him in. Oh, this is, this is entirely pencil. Better, better than pencil, it's digital. Just delete button <laughs> and then it never happened. Never happened. Yeah. Never happened. Uh, it's not like we're recording this. Uh, Running backs. Uh, I went to uh, you mentioned earlier, probably should have or not. You, you, you might think about it more as one. Um, but I went to um, one is Dallin Hayden. I think if I think that's the guy, if they do go with one, it, I would have just put Dallin Hayden um, out of Tennessee, Ohio State looking for another Tennessee running back to replace Master Teague. You know, if we. There's also talks about him being into Tennessee, but once again, like Michigan, why? Like, it's, it just feels like a, uh, there was a player transfer from Michigan to Tennessee this week or last week. And I was just like, out of the frying pan into the fire, why on earth would you do that? But yeah, uh, Dallin Hayden is a guy I like a lot. And I think Ohio State likes a lot. And I think he likes Ohio State a lot. So yeah, I'll pencil that one in. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I got Dallin Hayden in. I uh, know the kid well. I think he really likes Ohio State. And everyone keeps saying, oh, he's plan C behind Nick Singleton and whoever else, blah, blah, blah. But I think he's plan A. And I can say that with a lot of confidence that I remember I originally asked about the kid, someone in the know. And from the bat, I mean, this was last year. This was not recently. This was last year. And they were like, Alfred loves him. We love him. We want him. We want him bad. We'll take his commitment today. And this was like last fall. So uh, you got to your point earlier about trusting Ohio State's opinion and board over the rankings and things like that. I think this is one where you just got to say, all right, let's see. And I think if they recruit 2023 back well, I know they're Richard Young, number one back in the country. They're they're probably in the lead for it right now. And you have the two guys in Pryor and Henderson. It's OK if Dallin Hayden is not Ezekiel Elliott. Right. If he's a productive guy who could give you some some good reps at a minimum, great. If he becomes a superstar, amazing. But right. there's a good chance he won't have to be Ezekiel Elliott, you know, for Ohio State to be successful with him on the roster. So I, I, I'm good with him in the class. That's the only guy I have. I think they'll take two if they could get one of their like, you know, Nick Singletons or Gavin Sawchucks maybe type of guys. I'm not sure they feel the same way about Damari Alston as they once did. Um, so we'll see. I, I think Hampton's going to end up at UNC, but if he takes the visit, maybe, and they feel like they get him, maybe they say, you know what? We'll go with two. Uh, I hadn't said Amari Hampton yet. You're jumping the gun on me. Uh, also, I <laughs> well, he's another guy in the mix. I strictly said no 2023 <laughs> guys. And you're out here dropping 2023 names. Come on now. 
Um, yeah, Amari Hampton is the second running back I added to the mix here. And I'm going to be super honest with you, Alex. I straight up stole this name from the uh, A deck from a couple weeks ago. So uh, I don't always do that, but this time I, I did do it. So you are, I was going to ask you just to sort of justify it since, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, Alex writes the A deck. Um, so, but I think you already talked about him. So I think, uh, I think we're maybe good to move on to the defense. Let's do it. Yeah. Not, not adding a third tight end. So just stating that, uh, defensive line, no committed defensive lineman yet, uh, which is not a thing that I'm in the least worried about because Larry Johnson. So Caden Curry, I feel like if I were ranking these guys with how good I feel that they'll eventually end up in Columbus and sign in December and all of that. He might be number one on the list as far as like my confidence goes. I'm with you there. I think that's fair. Um, to me, it's kind of been a matter of when, not if. Yeah. Um, I do think Alabama, Clemson, like interest in those guys and even Indiana getting momentum with him. But uh, I don't know. I just I just feel like there's family ties to Ohio, Ohio State. And I think that's that's that will be that will be a dude that they do land. Next up is Dominic James. Uh, he is from the IMG Academy, the famed IMG Academy. Um, can they get him out of the South? Because he's originally from Alabama. Is that correct? Before he went yep. to play football in at IMG. So seems like a difficult get, but unlike the offensive line, I have confidence for days in Ohio State's ability to recruit the defensive line. So yeah, go get whoever you want. And I feel good that they're going to win more often than they're going to lose. And I feel like they want yeah. Nick James. Yeah. Yeah. That The one thing I'm trying to figure out is outside of Caden Curry, which defensive tackles do they want? Cause there's a few of them that are visiting um, in June, like four or five outside of Curry and, Dominic James, I think they need to decide, like, do we definitely want to go and make a strong push for him? Because I think they can get him. Um, Larry Johnson's built that relationship and I think they can get him. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how the dominoes fall there, but I am okay with almost like any of five names that you throw in at defensive tackle for this class. Fair enough. Uh, well, th those were my two names for defensive tackle. So <laughs> next I have, I have two defensive ends. Uh, first off, Kenyatta Jackson. Uh, he is also from Florida, although he is from Hollywood, Florida. Uh, as a name I've had just sort of bookmarked for Ohio State for a while. So maybe it's it's me sort of just saying like I've I've been I've had my flag planted here for a while and I'm sticking with it. Uh, what do you think? It's a good name. I was not feeling it a few months back. I think his teammate Ryan Turner being committed helps. Absolutely. I think Ohio State's turned up the heat on him. He's expected, I think they're going to make an unofficial visit and an official visit, which tells you a lot. Um, and Ohio State's had a lot of success with out of state kids who do that uh, in the past. Um, so I feel pretty, I like you having him on this list. I've been trying to figure out who's the defensive ends and I think a guy like Wilfredo Ibar might be underrated as a possibility. And I think, I do think Ene White is going to end up in the South, but I think Ohio State is doing better there than people think. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I like Kenyatta Jackson as, as one of those two guys. I had been pronouncing it Anai. So thank you for the bonus uh, correction on the pronunciation of Ani. Uh, let's see. Uh, next up, I have Amari Abor. Um, was a Oklahoma lock for a long time until he wasn't. Uh, it kind of feels like Ohio State. Uh, his name's going to escape me, of course. My name recalls going to uh, the offensive tackle that Ohio State was definitely going to get last year until he all of a sudden. J.C. Latham. J.C. Latham. Uh, until he just all of a sudden signed with Bama because Bama is amazing at developing offensive tackles. So the flip side of this is Ohio State's amazing at developing defensive ends. So, you know, I, 
I'm not going to put Oklahoma in the by any means in the same bucket that I put, you know, Tennessee and Michigan. Like, why on earth would you go play there? Because if you're on the offensive side of the ball, I 100 percent get why you'd want to go play for Oklahoma on the defensive side of the ball. I, I don't if you have better options, why not explore them? Uh, and I think uh, I think that's what Abor is doing here. Um, uh, this is a late push. Well, not late. It's only it's only May, but late push for Ohio State for a guy who was once considered an Oklahoma lock. Yeah, I think they always just felt like, let us get to this point and get him on for a visit and we could do our thing. And I, from what I know, he wasn't always the Oklahoma lock that the crystal balls or the future cast had him as and probably hurt perception a little bit as far as Ohio State's chances. Now, I don't think he was always favoring Ohio State, and I do think he is favoring Ohio State now. So to your point, they've made a nice little push the last few months, uh, whereas I would, if I had to pick any school right now, I would pick Ohio State heading into the visits. Now, visits are going to happen, so we'll see how things do fall. But I think Ohio State is in a good spot, and I like I like him being on your list. He would be in my mock class for sure as of today. All right. Uh, I'm not adding any additional linebackers at this time. And I wanted to. I have a 24 person class here. Um, I wanted to make it a 25 person class. I, I, for the life of me, couldn't find a linebacker to put in this spot that I both felt like Ohio State felt great about and also that they felt great about Ohio State. Um, am I missing someone here? Who's that third linebacker? No, it's it's tough to figure out. They want to add someone, though. I think they do. They, and and they, I wanted to add someone for him. I just couldn't find a name. I actually wanted to to stick it. Yeah, like like if they want Sean Murphy, they could get Sean Murphy. But that's one where the rankings don't match up. I saw the kid live two weeks ago. It's not it doesn't matter. Look, can he go to Ohio State or Alabama and play? Absolutely. I actually expect him to end up at like Alabama or LSU and probably be a multi-year starter there. He could play. He's not a five-star top 30 kid in the class, in my opinion. He's a top 200 kid. Um, and he's, you know, he's, you look at him now, he looks like an NFL linebacker. But I just don't think he's what they're looking for right now. And so that's why I don't think they're going to take him. But that could change. But David Bailey from from, from Matter, Matter Day in California is a kid who Bill Green's mentioned. I don't know. I got to check in where Ohio State stands on him. But – I've heard he's a kid that maybe they could get. No one's really kind of leading the charge there and they could come in and maybe he's a top like 75 kid. I think they can maybe come in and get him. I think, think they could have got Justin Medlock if they made a push there, but it seems like they didn't really want him either. And I think he's going to go to Oklahoma. So you're right. I mean, is there a safety like a Jake Pope from Buford, Georgia, where Harry Miller's from? Like he's six one one ninety. Like is he a kid who could play at 220 in college and, play that Pete Werner linebacker position, maybe. So you could end up with that type of, you know, bullet, another bullet that they move right. down, or maybe they say, Hey, court Williams is going to move down or, Hey, Ronnie Hickman is going to be a, a linebacker and we don't really need the numbers. So it, it's interesting, but I do think they're going to try to try for one more. All right. And I'm adding one additional defensive back to the class, um, Xavier and Wankpa. Wankpa? How am I how, how am I pronouncing that and, again? And I've already forgotten. I'm going and for now I'm going and Wonkpa. And Wonkpa. All right. So we'll that's see, I'll I'll have to double check that. I asked a few people, they didn't know, and I thought <laughs> they should have known. Um, hey, at least I'm not alone this time. That's all that matters. Yeah. Just so I don't like sure. missing the obvious ones. Yeah. So looking at my uh, looking at my class here, again, I said I wanted to go 24. I, mean, I wanted to go 25. I only came up with 24. So I want to give you the 25th player. Add, add a member to this class for me. Who, who is one player? You, you have to work off of the framework that these are the 24. So that, that's the one condition here. Who are you adding? Okay. You get, you get the 25th um, player. Hmm. I'm debating. I think it's going to be a linebacker. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to make it a linebacker real, real bad. It could be a corner, though. I don't think they're going to get Toriano pride. I, I think no. knowing Jair Brown's a little. Uh, well, and... that's the thing. Like they could go get a corner, but also not necessarily. 
I again, I worked under the framework that there were no decommits. So if he does decommit, then they're obviously going to go out and, you know, get another yeah, corner. They can. Yeah. I mean, Ephesians Prysock is a guy I think people underrate with their chance, a cornerback out of California. Um, I think they got a shot, you know, I, I want to watch what happens with Will Johnson in Michigan down the road. I am not calling that one by any means, but now two defensive uh, secondary coaches have changed on him and I'm not expecting them to have a great year. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a possibility, but I'll, Oh, this is tough. Do I want right. to go receiver? Ooh, just, let me just go down this list. I put together real quick. I just, just, um, just for the record to everyone who is listening and let me kill a little bit of time to let Alex look. I sprung this on him. This was not fair. This was, this was a crap. Move that's on okay. My part. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to go, you know what? I might go with, uh, I mean, I'm going to say linebacker TBD, but if that's a cop out, I'll go with, um, I'm going to say they take another defensive end and I'll go Wilfredo Ibar. Okay. I think it's not a done deal by any means, but I think that one's up for grabs coming into the visits. And I think they need to kind of restock that defensive end room. They got a lot of older guys in there, not a ton of talent other than Jack Sawyer that you're super excited about uh, that that's younger. And so I'm going to go with uh, Wilfredo Ibar as a, as a fifth defensive lineman. And hey, if you if you're having trouble getting linebackers, just get another pass rusher and it'll make up for it, right? There you go. All right. Uh, I want to we're going to hit up some real quick ask Sloopcast questions. These are from our Discord. Feel free to lightning round these questions. You don't you don't need to get super duper detailed. Cool. Um, Florida Buckeye uh, on our Discord. Um, with all uh, with all due respect, Mister Florida Buckeye, these are very long winded. Um, One of the questions he asks, if I'm going to summarize it, is he believes that South Florida, the Miami area, has the best concentration of talent of any metro in the country. We always talk about states like Florida versus Texas versus California. But more specific than that, do you have a feel for like a metro area producing talent that you think is maybe... Or, you know, one or two that you think are maybe the best? Uh, I mean, I guess it could, what it, what do we consider metro area, but... I, uh, use your see, discretion on that. I mean, you know, Region. Atlanta. What's that? Atlanta, Miami. Yeah. Miami. Atl- Atlanta. Yeah. South Florida, I, I think. I don't know. For me, just give me those South Florida dudes yeah. any day. I, I, that's, that's who I'm taking. I, Texas, Georgia, Florida, California are like, his like proven to be the best four States, but give me the South Florida dudes all day. Yeah. Which is essentially what Florida Buckeye was also alluding to. Uh, and he also brings up the fact that at least the fact in his mind that Ohio state does not recruit that area very well. And he's wondering if maybe that's why they're not, you know, we're all still feeling a little bit of the the pains from the Alabama game. Sort of, mo- you know, mulling over, is there a talent gap there? Is this why there's a talent gap there? If there is a talent gap there? Um, I think he makes the presumption that there is a talent gap. And I, I grant you that during the national title game, there was absolutely a talent gap. But I don't think that's a systemic issue between Ohio State and Alabama Bama does have better players. You see that in the recruiting classes, but I don't think it's insurmountable. Um, but I think I, one of the things, Alex, I've been pushing on people since all, all last season and for months after the season was that Ohio State lost seven defensive backs and then went into a shortened offseason. So none of us should have been surprised by what happened. There uh, was so much. Yeah, <laughs> there's so much behind the, the scenes COVID stuff is well that we're not going to get into. No, yeah, there's so much stuff, and I'll just leave it at that. I do not think it was a talent thing whatsoever. I think Ohio State honestly has just as good a talent as Alabama. I, I, and think, I think specifically in the defensive backfield, Ohio State had severe talent issues last year, and again, they lost seven players from the roster previous. One transfers to Rutgers. Two got arrested. Um, a was it four or five went to the NFL draft or went yeah, to the it NFL? Did, it didn't help. It didn't help that they lost all that. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that a thousand percent. And with the younger guys and the newer guys, 
a new coach, Jeff Halfley left. Yeah. They didn't have the spring and the proper fall camp to be Absolutely. able to, and, and the games, the games in the season to develop properly. Absolutely. So there was a lot going on there, but at the same time, I think coaching, I think there was coaching blunders. Yeah. Errors. Yeah. And I don't think they covered up their inefficiencies very well, the shortcomings very well. Um, and that needs to be fixed this year, which they think they made the fixes to do that. But I also think um, I'll, I'll say that like there was other things in that Alabama game. Like what do they have? They have like one or two padded practices because of all the different COVID issues. And like yeah. Justin Fields had one practice. I mean, he played actually, I think pretty decently, yeah. but you can't blame the game on him, but it, it there was like a lot of factors. All he had all to do, said, Alex, yeah. all he had to do was score on every single drive. Come on. Yeah. And he almost did it for a while. If he, they, they, <laughs> they stuck with it for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. For no, sure. it's, so I don't think it, anyone blames we'll just, the offense for what happened. I don't want to say like, I don't count the championship, but like it didn't for me. I mean, maybe I'm a little different too. Like I've just been in this so long, but like it didn't sting as much as like some other ones. Like oh like oh six oh seven or yeah. or the year after like it just didn't sting like I know that they got like blown out but like a Alabama was really good but like b like there was just so many factors of like the whole entirety of last year that like I'm just like I was just happy to be there you're like right. it, you were happy to be Clemson and you were just like you're just happy there was a season there was almost no season so like let's yeah. see how they do this year uh, people I feel like the Ohio State fan base took the Clemson loss last year way harder than the Bama loss this year. And I think part of that is like you kind of just put your hands up and say, oh, well, versus the Clemson game in which a lot of Ohio State fans felt completely screwed over. But that's a different conversation for a different day. Uh, Let's see some other questions here. Um, (laughs) Stuart, Stuart, you're lucky it's Memorial Day. I'll actually ask this one. Uh, When will we get back to paying players blatantly like the SEC does? I've been. We keep making McDonald's bag jokes in the Discord. It, it's, it's Wendy's bags, okay? We're a little classier here in Ohio. They are Wendy's bags. You got to support local business. That's what um, I'm saying. Yeah, no, I, I, look, I, I, don't, I, I... You don't have to give an actual answer to that one, Alex. It's <laughs> I'll okay. say this. I think Ohio State is in compliance with the rules as much as they've ever been. So I think they're going to do... Are they going to push the lines and the boundaries a little bit for sure. I think everyone yeah. is NIL is going to help yeah. a ton. So people don't believe answer, me I when I tell them that the urban day era is a way cleaner program than the trestle area. It is. And there's I, a people lot of don't believe me that. because oh, people in Ohio tend to put Jim Trestle on this moral pedestal and he never did anything wrong. And urban I like Urban, don't get me wrong, but he kind of had a reputation, deserved or not, as a win at all cost guy. But I'm telling I tell people all the time and they never believe me that the program is way cleaner in this era versus the Trestle era. For sure. No doubt. See, now Alex said it. You can't disagree with me anymore. <laughs> um Gangland535 wants to start a petition to where the cocaine whites and the full blacks each one time this year. We, we like the all blacks and the all whites on. I want to combine them. I'd love to see like the all blacks away with the white Jersey. Mm, I don't know if I love that, but I do love, (laughs) I do love the all whites and all blacks. And uh, I'm not, you know, I think Ohio state, I love their, everyone's like, oh, use their tradition and their jerseys are perfect as they are. Alabama doesn't wear those. Look, I I think for a couple games a year, who cares? Um, I also think that as far as like Ohio State's traditional jersey, guys, we don't have one. I hate to break this to you. The Ohio State jersey changes every few years. Like this current jersey that they have with the helmet stripe on the side is the longest they've stuck with a jersey in a while. And the gray sleeves were better. So cosine, gray sleeves. The, the jerseys that they wore, they keep bringing them back for like the, the yeah. Clemson game and the playoffs and stuff. 
that they wore were like the Cardell run. I like those, like the gray sleeves. Like, yeah, I, I don't yeah. necessarily need the big black numbers on the shoulder pads, but other than that, that should be their permanent jersey. Yeah, yeah. agree, agree. All right. Uh, who is the all time best Ohio State quarterback? So there's an easy one for you. <laughs> um, it's the all time best Ohio State quarterback. It was a debate we are having, and and our uh, our friend Nomad, who's one of the mods in the Discord server, uh, brought it brought it Man. to you. Uh, I it's I'm gonna go. I it's I Justin Fields. Justin Fields. It is Justin Fields. <laughs> thank thank you, uh, Nomad. Nomad, you in here? Uh, he is in here, and he's not happy. Too bad. It's close though. I, yeah, you you could argue so many things like. You can just argue so many things, stats yeah. versus wins. And, but probably, I mean, I didn't see Arch Schleister play live. So it's hard for me to compare him to some others, but I probably Justin Fields is the best, like most talented Ohio state quarterback, best Ohio state one, obviously a ton semifinals finals, didn't win a championship, mm-hmm. but. I want to. Yeah, I'm going to toss. This I love out. Troy Smith, though. I, I, I'm yeah. personally biased toward Troy top, Smith. Uh, top three uh, would absolutely have to include those two. And I think we could have a lot of discussion for number three. Um, I I'd go art, but JT's got to be up there for what he's accomplished. So I was the perfect age when like, you know, when a certain player is really good and you're a certain age and they're always going to be a hero in your mind because of it. Joe Germain is like that for me. Um, we, by the way, we need to quit like whitewashing the trail prior era just because we don't like how it ended. He was tremendous, but yet yeah. we've kind of mentally blocked off a lot of that because of how it ended. Yeah. And, and I don't know. Part of me is like, as a quarterback throwing the ball, he wasn't great. Just like same with Braxton Miller, but the two right. of them, what they were able to accomplish from that position was great. So sort of right. the same with JT Barrett as well. Um, is a shame we didn't see him, I think, continue to develop as a thrower the way we had sort of hoped he did when he was so good as a redshirt freshman. But there's a lot yeah, of well, reasons. That's probably, yeah, I was going to say that's probably because Urban had him take 20,000 hits over the, the four years. So I, and I think there was maybe some coaching mistakes in there as well, as far as other stuff goes. But again, that's a different topic for a different day. All right. One last question. This is an easy one for you. Fourth person. Uh, on your Mount Rushmore for wholesome television, the first three are Mr. Rogers, Bob Ross, and Steve Irwin. Do you, do you have a number four? Oof. Uh, you you have a young. Who is it, Bob? Bob Ross is the painter. Uh, no, no, no. Who are the Who are the three again? Oh, Mr. Rogers, Bob Ross, and Steve <laughs> Mr. Irwin. Mr. Rogers. Oh man. Wholesome uh, television, Mount Rushmore. I don't have a four. I'll have to think about that. I'll get back to you guys. I'm, I'm going Steve from Blue's Clues. Steve from Blue's Clues? Yeah. I was slightly too old for that, but I'm the second oldest of a bunch of cousins. And like, you know, Steve. Yeah, I guess I guess maybe he could be up there. I don't know. <laughs> is it's like is, Urkel count? I don't know. I Someone said Urkel in in the, the <laughs> in the debate we were having on the Discord server. Nomad said it was him. So, okay, Uncle Nomad, Phil you finally got Prince. one right. Well, I'm sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> I said maybe Uncle Phil from Fresh Prince. I don't, I don't know if that counts, but. I, I think it's wholesome television, and I think he was a, <laughs> he was a character in it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll accept it. All right, yeah. that's the end of the show. I'll, I'm going to try and respect Alex's time here and not keep him around too long. So just real quick, I want to. Uh, encourage everyone to check out everything Buckeye Scoop over at BuckeyeScoop.com. Check out the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel um, and just go to the sloopcast.com. That's just a landing page filled with links for like our merch store, uh, for the Discord server, our Patreon. Um, if you wanted, if you were thinking, oh man, I really wish I could have asked a question for Alex. Well, you should have been in our Discord server. So, oh well, maybe you can join and, and, and get there next time. So, uh, yeah, just go ahead and check out the sloopcast.com and find links for all of our all of our stuff. And this is normally where we do Kyle's corner. Uh, he would talk about the crew. Um, so that that's typically what would happen here. But we'll just go ahead and fast forward past it. And uh, I'll tell everyone that tonight's ending music 
uh, will be brought to you by, if I can scroll to the correct part in the show notes for this, a band called Narrow Arrow. They're from Marion, Ohio, and the name of the song is Derelict. It's actually Daryl space licked because bands like to do things weird. But yeah, it's Derelict. And you can check out the show notes for links to their Bandcamp page and a YouTube link to the song itself. And with uh, all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Narrow Arrow. So this is another pause where the audio folk will get to listen to a song. I assume that like there might be a lot of people listening that uh, are here because of Alex and, and not because of me. So this is just I, the YouTube people don't actually get the song. Sorry. Uh, blame YouTube and the music association, the MPAA. No, they're, they're the movie ones. Whoever the Rhea, that's who it is. Blame them and blame YouTube. All right. Well, let's, let's go ahead and end the show. Well, man. Well, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I have to do one more ad read, but. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you don't, you can go. <laughs> I mean, if you, or you can sit there and be awkward, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> I'll, I'll take off. Thanks, man. Have a great Memorial day weekend. Yep. You too. All right. See ya. Bye. Oh, uh, let me find the thing where it's just me camera only. Well, this this will have to be good enough for the ad read. This will have to be good enough for the ad read. Once again, I'd like to thank Narrow Arrow for sponsoring, not sponsoring, for ending today's show. And I'd like to thank the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for sponsoring today's show. Uh, the Mad, I need to center myself. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company uh, that will take your barbecue from good to great. Uh, they have the Just Send It box. They have box sets. This is, this is what I'm doing now. They have box sets. There's the Just Send It box, which I like to call the versatility box. Uh, it's the S&P Bud, the Sonoran Heat, the Cajun, and the Smoked. Uh, these are mildly spicy, but not super spicy, and can go great on... All of these can go great on your chicken, or on your vegetables, on your pork on your beef. These, these are, these are your versatile spices. Uh, and I, that's, it's just, if you're, if you have someone in your life, who's maybe just starting cooking, this is the one for you or maybe for them or for you to give to them. Uh, I know we have, uh, we have a bunch of high schoolers graduating. Maybe they're going off to college. Maybe you want to help them not eat out of a uh, fast food window and you want to say, Hey, try and cook for yourself. Here's four versatile spices from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Or if you're feeling especially generous, you can get them the whole hog, which is literally all of the spices that the Mad Canadian has. It's all of them. It is all of them. So now they're well set on their way to cooking for them themselves. So you can find those spices. You can find all of those spices, a couple more box sets. Uh, at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company.com. Use promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 to get 10% off. Yes, you can get 10% off the whole hog. All of the spices, 10% off. Yes, you can still use it. Uh, Mad Canadian BBQ.com, where he has your butts covered. This episode of the SLOOPCAST. Oh, uh, thank you, Nomad. This episode of the SLOOPCAST also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Now, you can also get spices for for dad, but let, let's we did grads before we're doing dads now. It's dads and grads. Now we're doing dads. So get your dad some coffee. Uh, don't just get him any coffee though. Don't don't get him a don't get him a big plastic tub of Folgers. Don't you're you owe your life to your father. Don't buy him Folgers. Buy him some iron bean coffee. Uh, my iron bean coffee is a world class hand roasted micro batch coffee brewer. Every bag is fresh, fresh roasted to order. They're based out of Ohio, based out of Ter Perrysburg, which is near Toledo. Uh, fair trade certified, USDA organic. Integrity is at the heart of everything they do. Uh, if you don't know what your dad likes as far as coffee goes, maybe he's a medium roast guy. Maybe he's a dark roast guy. Maybe you just don't know. 
Uh, you can get him a gift card. Gift cards are available. So you can you can get him a gift card and he can pick out whatever he wants. If you're not feeling the gift card, you can get the whole shebang, which is a sampler pack of uh, a bunch of the coffees. I think it's like all the unflavored coffees. At least that's that's the version of it that I got when I bought it. So get dad a whole selection of coffees that's available, both ground and whole bean. And if he likes flavored coffees, uh, he can check out, you know, you you can check out some of the flavored coffees. Uh, they have the murder coffees. They have the mom's carrot cake, the blueberry, the mint chocolate chip. Guys, there's too many coffees for me to tell you about all of them in one ad read. So just go to ironbeancoffee.com. It's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. 